In mechanical engineering, we're not so likely to be doing problems with reservoirs and windows and gates and dams and things. But certainly, when we look at an airfoil, like this NACA 3408 airfoil, which has just a little bit of camber and fairly slim, uh, when we look at this airfoil, the pressure generally will be higher on the bottom than it is on the top, and the result will give us some lift in the vertical direction. Now, if we go and we go to a site called Java Foil, we can actually calculate the pressure distribution that we can expect on an airfoil like this. In this case, it's operating at zero angle of attack, so that means the flow is coming this way, or seen another way, the wing is moving this way through the air. Now, at zero angle of attack, we still get lift from this airfoil because it's got a little bit of camber, a little bit of curvature. The top goes up and the bottom's relatively flat. So we can look at cruising performance for this particular airfoil and figure out the lift. Now this is a plot of pressure coefficient. Pressure coefficient is a dimensionless measure of pressure, so we don't have to repeat this measurement for, or this calculation for a whole lot of different velocities. We can scale it relative to the velocity and just look at the pressure coefficient. So what this is telling us is that right at the front of the wing, right about here, the pressure, because this is a plot of negative CP, the pressure is actually higher than ambient pressure. There's a stagnation point here and the pressure is quite high. But very quickly the flow accelerates around the nose of the airfoil and by Bernoulli's equation, by Bernoulli's effect, when it accelerates the pressure drops quite rapidly. So on top the pressure follows this line And by the time we get to about here, we've got a fairly substantial negative pressure on the top. But at that point, the negative pressure on the bottom is also quite substantial and just as big. So there's no lift generated by this part of the wing. Low pressure on top, low pressure on the bottom, same effect because the fluids had to accelerate around the rounded edge of the airfoil here. But on the bottom we very rapidly see that negative pressure dropping back down to zero and actually becoming a little positive so the pressure in this region here is actually a little bigger than atmospheric pressure. On the top though it keeps on accelerating the pressure gets lower and lower on top and the result is that this region here, the whole top of the wing until we get back to about there, is all at a pressure lower than atmospheric pressure. So the lift generated depends on the difference between the pressure on the bottom and the pressure on the top. That's this difference here. So if we wanted the total force of the wing in lift, we'd have to integrate that area on the curve over the area of the wing. So we'd be able to get the force of lift equal to double integral over the area P bottom minus P top DA. That's this area here. However, one thing you'll notice is that the distance between these two curves is considerably bigger at the front part of the wing than it is at the back part of the wing. This tells us something about what the distribution of lift is over that wing, that the net lift force is not like that, but something further forward like that. 
because the lift is concentrated here. But looking at these as point forces doesn't tell us the whole story if we're trying to design the structure of the wing. So we still need to look at this as a distributed force that's decreasing as we move aft on the wing with the result that the structure in here that we build will have to be stronger than the structure back here. And we get that by looking at the pressure distribution and the loads that result over the entire wing.